All right, guys, check this out. Last night, this vintage original pair of Air Jordan 1 highs from 1985 sold on eBay for an astronomical $10,099.99. It's absolutely pristine. The shoes come in their original box from the athlete's foot. They even come with their original shopping bag from the athlete's foot. Before I ship this pair off to its new home, I thought we'd have to take advantage of the opportunity of doing a side-by-side -side compare and contrast video with Michael Jordan's game-worn Air Jordan 1 PEs. So there you have it, right over here, the game-worn pair of PEs, and over here, the pair that was sold at retail in brand new dead stock condition. Incidentally, here's the bag from the athlete's foot. Pretty cool to have an absolutely complete set of dead stock white, black, and red Air Jordan 1 highs. All right, so here we go. Believe it or not, there are a lot of similarities and some differences between the Air Jordan 1s that Nike made for Michael Jordan and the ones that were sold to the public. The biggest difference between the shoes, as we're looking at them from the front, is the fact that the retail pair are much higher than the PE pairs. So let's turn them to the side and have a look at them side by side. You'll notice that the dead stock pair has the Jumpman hang tag, and on the inside of the Jumpman hang tag is gonna be product specifications about the Air Jordan High. Let's kind of scoot these over and see if we can get almost everything into our frame. All right, perfect. So have a look at them side by side and you can see that the PEs are actually a mid top, whereas the Air Jordan highs are high tops. When we look back at the box, you'll notice that originally the shoe was called the Air Jordan High in white, black, and red. There's no number like Air Jordan 1. Back in the day, OG Air Jordans were just called Air Jordans or Air Jordan Highs not necessarily Air Jordan 1, 2, 3, 4. The numbering of Jordans didn't happen until the retro era. So getting back to the height differences between the PEs and the retail pair, I wanna show you something really interesting about the stitching on the shoes. Okay, so have a look at the stitching right here that starts at the midsole, works its way up and past the black swoosh, and then cuts over towards the eyelets. And here, let's have a look at it on this side. So you can see the stitching starts here. It goes right up just above the swoosh and then cuts over this way, almost at a 90 degree angle. Okay, so that is the PE stitching. And let's have a look at the retail pair. Okay, so follow the stitching, and remember how on the PE, right above the swoosh is where the stitching cut over? Well, on the retail pair, the stitching keeps on going up. There's actually almost four extra full stitches before the stitching line cuts over and goes towards the eyelets. And here, let's have a look at it on this side. So here it goes way past the swoosh and then it cuts over. Now that that's fresh in our mind, let's have a look again at the stitching on the PE pair. Pretty cool. So the PEs are mids and the retail pair are high tops. Another difference when you're looking at the uppers, kind of from a macro perspective like this, are the swooshes. It's 
kind of nice to compare the shapes of the swooshes as they wrap around the back of the shoe. Now let's look at this one. It's crazy how you can really tell that the swoosh is all one piece that kind of comes around back here and then wraps around and becomes the swoosh on the medial side of the shoe. Incidentally, the outside of the shoe is called the lateral side and the inside of the shoe is called the medial side. So let's turn the shoes around and just have a look at them from the back. It should be pretty obvious the height difference when we compare them from this point of view as well. Like look how much higher the retail pair is way back here than the PEs. Something also worth noting is the differences in materials used. So typically on Air Jordan 1s, the part that deteriorates quickest are the collars. So you can see the ever slight, almost like hairline, cracks. They look like fingerprints in there. This is actually a really nice pair. But what we start to see on these OG Air Jordan 1s is that up there where the collars start to crack. And then this little part starts to crack too. The material used on Michael's pair are much less likely to crack. It's kind of a softer leather and not just on the collars but also all over the shoes like have a look there at the toe box just how soft and plush that is and let's compare it with this dead stock crispy pair right here it's definitely not the same leather that you see on Mike's pair versus the retail pair all right, let's have a look at the outsoles and the midsoles. The midsoles on Michael's pair are yellowed, and the outsoles show a lot of heavy use. On the dead stock pair, The outsoles are so crispy and the midsoles are just a pristine white. And just so you can see both of the outsoles together, here we go. They're identical. Let's turn the shoes around and have a look at them from the front where we'll really be able to see the differences in the leather. Just so soft and buttery over here and then so firm and crispy over here. So let's talk about the shoelaces. You'll notice that Michael Jordan's PEs have red shoelaces, which is really cool because originally the Air Jordan 1 in white, black, and red did not come with red shoelaces. Like this was something that Michael Jordan did. But from the factory, this is the way that the shoes were factory laced or unlaced is probably more appropriate. So they came with two sets of laces, the black ones down here, and then the white ones on the top eyelet on the medial side. 
Usually, when Michael Jordan played in the white, black, and red Air Jordan 1s, he laced them up with the black laces. So it's pretty cool that my pair of PEs has these red laces. And what I'd like to do one of these days is look up some old archival footage of Michael Jordan playing in 84, 85, and 86, because those are the years that he wore the Air Jordan 1. And I'd like to find all the different games where he wore them with red laces and see if I can figure out exactly which game or games he wore these shoes in. These shoes have a lot of personality, like you can see this red gash right here, one right up there, this little black mark over here. Over here is another gash discoloration. So hopefully one of these days I'll be able to put together a list of all the games that MJ wore this colorway shoe with the red laces and I can watch the games in slow-mo and maybe there will be close-up footage that I can tie these shoes to like a particular game or games. That would be really awesome. Okay, so let's talk about some more similarities and differences between these shoes. I want to go inside here and show you the insoles say Nike Air. That's the same thing on Michael Jordan's pair. But where things get a little bit different are going to be up here with all of this information. So you can see 11 and a half would be the size. These are size 11 and a half, which is my ideal size. And then 850911TY1. So 85 stands for 1985. 09-11 would be the months of 85. So we're talking about September and November of 1985 is when these shoes were made. And then the TY1 is the factory where these shoes were made. Gosh, they're so crispy and so pristine. I'm actually not surprised that they sold for more than 10 grand. And that was the number that I was hoping to get for them. And there's so many collectible shoes these days that are fetching five digits. And you would think that the sneaker that started it all in the most iconic color, brand new dead stock with box and the hang tag and even the shopping bag, you'd think that this pair of shoes would fetch 10 grand, and it sure did. So now let's have a look at the information on Michael Jordan's pair. So when we look inside here, you'll see 13 and a half, 85, 0204, TYPS. Okay, so Michael's right shoe is a size 13 and a half, and when we look at the left shoe, you'll see that it's actually a size 13. And 850204 would be the date. So these shoes were made also in 1985, but these ones were made between February and April. And TYPS is going to be the coding there that shows that these are player sample shoes. I believe it stands for Tom Yang Player Sample. So the right shoe is a 13 and a half. And then the left shoe see if we can see in there the left shoe is just a 13 now a lot of people thought that Michael wore different size shoes because of his foot injury that he suffered during his second season but actually Michael was wearing different size shoes way earlier than that I had the opportunity a few years ago to interview a ball boy that got a pair of shoes that Michael gave him in October of 1984 it was actually a prototype Nike Air ship. And way back in October of 84, Michael was also wearing a 13 and a 13 and a half. I did a couple videos with those shoes. I did a side-by-side -side comparison with these game-worn ones and then with Michael's game-worn ships. And then also an interview with the ball boy that got the ships. I'm really proud of those videos and I'm gonna put links in the description below. So if you wanna see these shoes even more compared with another pair of shoes that Michael wore, please tune into those videos as well. 
But anyway, just to clarify a myth, Michael Jordan has worn a 13 and a 13 and a half as far as I know, the whole time that he was in the NBA, not just after his foot injury. Let's turn these around and look at him again side by side. It's fascinating to me that the pairs released to the public are high and that Michael's are mids. And actually the same thing was true with those airships that we just talked about. Michael Jordan's prototype airships were a mid-top, and they were different than the airships that were released to the public and even other player-exclusive airships that other players in the NBA were wearing. You can see that both of the pairs have the Nike Air on the tags on the tongues. Just a couple of absolutely gorgeous examples of vintage original Air Jordan 1s. I'm really pleased with the results of this auction, selling for more than 10 grand. But I couldn't ship these shoes off to their new home without taking the opportunity to do a video comparing them side by side with these. So there you go, Michael Jordan's game-worn Air Jordan 1 PEs compared side-by-side -side with a dead stock pair of vintage original Air Jordan 1s from 1985. I hope you guys enjoyed the video.